YouTube channel hitting 25,000 subscribers Q&A. Take one. Okay. Okay. Hey everyone, thanks so much for subscribing to my YouTube channel, Christine Hot Tube. Uh, we just hit 25,000 subscribers. I think it's above 26,000 now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty exciting. John and I have been doing the channel for a couple of years, but only in the past year or so we've been really uh, vamping it up and uh, putting out more content. Um, so I just want to do a thank you video and do a short Q&A. Uh, this is really casual. If you guys hear strange noises around the house, it's because my dogs are running back and forth in the house for whatever reason. And I'm also running the washing machine doing laundry. So um, I guess a little bit about our YouTube journey. How's it been for you? Uh, <laughs> it, it's been a lot of work here and there, but you know, we only push out a video every week. So in the end, since we're having fun, it's not a big deal. And John's editing skills have been getting better is what I've been told. So I wish I could see his work, but uh, I like to listen to it. The dialogue's funny and the music's good. So that's been a pretty cool experience. Um, what else? Uh, some of our most popular videos, obviously the how the blind do their own makeup has been really popular. That's been picked up by outlets in Europe and stuff. Um, that was a question I get often. So you can view that video uh, on my channel. Another question is uh, people always wonder if it's really me commenting on Facebook or if it's John typing the comments for me, but no, it's really me. I have another mm -hmm. video on my YouTube channel about how the blind email and use Facebook and social media and use the internet. So that's another video that answers that question on my channel. A uh, question I get often, oh, another popular video is the, the spicy ramen um, Christine challenge. tries, yeah, spicy ramen challenge. Yeah, Christine tries spicy ramen, uh, the spicy ramen challenge, and a lot of people have been saying that we did it incorrectly. Like John left too much water in this in the broth. I followed the directions, okay. <laughs> you read but the directions incorrectly. I guess if, if looking at the video, there is maybe a little bit too much water that was like stuck on the noodles and it came apart. But may, we're thinking about maybe doing it again so people stop commenting about how we did it wrong. So I might be subjected again to more spicy noodles, so yeah. we'll see. So we're thinking about doing that again. Uh, a question I get a lot on my videos is if I'm still blind or visually impaired and people are doubting it because they say like I've looked at the ramen packet or I know where to look for the camera, but yes, I am still visually impaired. Nothing has changed with my vision, it hasn't gotten worse, it hasn't it's gotten like, better. Where did, you know, people always say like, where did you know to like look at the camera? As you as you know, uh, or you have you don't know, she can see shadows. So up, you know, in front of her is a big black camera. She can kind of see. I can the kind shadow. of see that because there's a window behind it. Plus, John usually stands behind the camera, and I can hear him or kind of feel his presence. When you lose your vision, you tend to pick up on things with your other senses. So uh, I hear things, or um, for example, if I'm walking, uh, I can tell when I'm coming up towards a wall because the acoustics change. So for example, things like that, uh, I can tell where to look. And I have vision for most of my life, so I it's a habit for me to move my eyes in the direction yeah. of someone I'm talking so to, like, or if I'm looking, for, you know, kind of looking at something, it's just a habit for me to put my eyes in that yeah. direction. Like people will say like, oh, well, how is she looking at the package? You know, it's just a habit for her because most of her life, or at least half her life, she was able to see. And it's very natural for someone to immediately look at something that's in their yeah. hand. Yeah, so, so John always says too, it's funny because I'm typing on my computer and he'll be like, you look at the computer screen still. And I totally do. Even though uh, sometimes my monitor, my desktop monitor is off, but I still look in the direction of the monitor because it's a habit. Yeah. So the answer is yes, I'm so blind. No, I did not get my vision back. And that's why it seems like I can still see. So as a thank you video, we wanted to create this video. We wanted to do a quick Q&A because there's a lot of questions that people keep asking. And then at the end, we got a cool uh, giveaway. Okay, so first question from Monica Sim. Uh, what are your favorite European cuisines? Have you been to Germany or Berlin? Is there something I don't like to eat? Oh, me. Or something you don't, don't like to eat? Uh, my favorite European cuisines, probably Spanish or Italian. Um, 
I have been to Germany. I have not been to Berlin. Surprisingly, uh, I we were thinking about going to Berlin this past trip to Europe that we just got back from, but we didn't. We ended up going to Prague instead. But I have not been to Berlin. I've been to Munich. That's the only German city I've been to. Yeah. Something I don't like to eat. Uh, I don't really like cooked salmon. I like, I love salmon raw. That's like one of my favorite pieces of sushi to eat. Um, and I like smoked salmon a lot, quite a bit. But I don't really like cooked salmon. Uh, if it's cooked well, uh, I enjoy it, but I don't prefer it. I would never order that off a menu. Uh, second question, uh, Ermila Carlin. Ermila um, Carlin? She says, how is, how is the Mexican food in Germany and abroad? Uh, hi Ermila, I know that I know your name because I actually read it quite a bit on my Facebook and you comment a lot and I get a lot of support from you, so thanks. Uh, Mexican food abroad, I have not, have we had it in Europe? No, not in Europe. We did see it, see um, quite a few Mexican places in Amsterdam, but we did not eat We did it. not try it because we're from Texas, as you know, yeah, so um, we get a lot of good we stuff. We did here. try Mexican food in Vietnam we and did. it was not very good. <laughs> like, I think if I lived in Vietnam and I was really craving Mexican food, it would sort of semi-satisfy the craving, yeah. but uh, definitely not as good Does as Does not compare, here. yeah. Uh, okay, from David Wu, um, any recommendations on exercises to improve cooking and tasting abilities? <sighs> David, you also said that you're the one that uh, recommended Purple Pig in Chicago for us next time, so thanks for that tip. Um, recommendations on how to improve cooking and tasting. Uh, I say this a lot, but I, it's, it really, there's really no shortcut. It kind of comes down to practice, 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 and experience a lot of things. So keep cooking. Uh, I say eat a lot of different foods, travel and try a lot of different foods. I think the more a variety of foods you taste, the more flavors you uh, uh, learn on your palate, I think that helps you uh, discern more and then it helps you figure out like what works and what doesn't. So I would say travel, eat, and cook. And always try things at least two times. Yes. Okay, um, Jessica Haynes uh, says, uh, what is your favorite thing to eat for breakfast? Mm, I think her name was Jessica Haynes Barron, right? Mm-hmm. I have good memory. Uh, what are my favorite things to eat for breakfast? Mm -hmm. um, hmm. I mean, I love sunny side up eggs. That's just kind of a classic thing for me. Growing up, my mom always just made that for me for breakfast and I would add a little bit of Maggie sauce and then just eat it with some crusty bread. So that's like a comfort breakfast for me. Uh, <laughs> In Texas, we have something called kolaches, which is actually John's like favorite thing to eat mm -hmm. for breakfast. Mm -hmm. um, it's originally, I, I believe, a Czech pastry that's um, initially filled, or originally filled with fruit. Yeah. But in Texas, they put a sausage inside. Yeah. With they cheese do it savory. And uh, a, a slice of jalapeno. It's the most magical thing you can eat. If you ever come to Texas, um, you gotta get it. At Shipley's. Shipley's, Shipley's Donuts are yeah, the best Shipley's Donuts. Shipley's Donuts has like and the good bomb kolaches. ass kolaches. Like, I could eat that every day. I love their donuts. They're glazed donuts. Yeah. Not a sponsor from Shipley's, but <laughs> if you guys want to sponsor. We yeah, Shipley's. We're willing to uh, eat a lot of donuts. <laughs> uh, okay, so we got one from uh, Con Fam. Mm -hmm. uh, how do I work the stove and work the heat without sight? Oh, how do I? Or how do you? Uh, so, Khaeng, hello. Uh, without vision, I use my stove, um, I've adapted my stove using these little bump, raised bump stickers that are on, marked on the stove so I can turn the knob and line up the knob according to the sticker on the stove. I use those stickers um, throughout my kitchen, like on my oven or my microwave, on the flat buttons that I can't feel. Um, I'll, uh, John taped them on there for me so I can tell uh, tactily how where um, certain I guess functions are certain dials are on on the equipment uh, This is from uh, Twi uh, Trisha Tran um, What has been the most rewarding part of this entire journey? 
<sighs> it has been a very crazy journey, but I think the most rewarding part about having been on MasterChef and winning it in season three, that's four years ago, guys. It's been four years. I think the most rewarding thing is being able to uh, experience a lot of the things I've done. Like, uh, you know, I was able to um, fly to Sweden and do like a, a supper club for IKEA. I've done, um, you know, I've Got your own cooking show in Canada. Yeah, I have my own cooking show in um, Canada called Four Senses on AMI. Um, um, the, done a ton of uh, public speaking. Yeah, I've just uh, met like so many people and, and I've been able to inspire a lot of people. I think the overall big picture that's been really rewarding for me through all of this is being able to, um, I think, advocate for people who are often uh, marginalized in society, whether it's someone with a disability or women or minorities, Asian Americans or uh, people with vision impairment. I think meeting these people and then having them tell me things like it's given them courage to apply for a job or to go back to school or to stand up to bullying or whatever it is. Uh, when I hear stories like that, it makes it all seem more real to me and much more rewarding. All right. Um, we have another question from Jim Lee. Do you have any ambitions that remain unfulfilled? <laughs> ambitions that remain unfulfilled. Uh, yeah, opening my own restaurant. That has not been easy. Uh, it takes... Um, I think a lot, yeah, a lot of people keep asking us like if we have a restaurant yet. Um, you know, we've been planning to do a restaurant for a while and it's just... We're just taking our time. You yeah, know, it's, I'm doing a lot of other hurry. things, so. Um, last question, oh, I don't know if this would be last, I'll look. So there's another question from uh, Nadine Vertez. Vertes, mm -hmm. Vertes. Uh, any tips on how to flip food on the stove? <laughs> uh, I'm pretty lame and I use like a big rubber spatula. Um, for example, if I'm making pancakes, then I just use like a big spatula or a turner yeah. and then just flip it. Um, yeah, there's really no need to have uh, that skill set. I mean, to like. I mean, if you want to make pancakes. Oh, to throw in the air. Yeah. I mean, is that is that what the question is asking? Like. No, I think just how to flip, flip things. things. Or just get I two just spatulas spatula. and just like. Or you get a plate, <laughs> put it on top, and you flip it over. That's and true. then just slide it back on. But that causes more Easy. dishes, and I'm usually pretty lazy. So. Yeah, but if you don't want to mess up, you know, whatever you're making, it could be a good way to do it. Well, that's it. Uh, so thank you to all of you for tuning in and subscribing to my YouTube channel. I'm gonna do another giveaway, another cookbook. Uh, Thanksgiving's around the corner. Uh, I want to hear from you what you're thankful for, um, and then we'll pick. Uh, an answer at random. Uh, yeah, leave it in the comments below. Yeah, and we'll pick a subscriber at random. You have to subscribe to my channel and leave a comment about what you're thankful for and then uh, we'll contact you and we'll send you my cookbook. So yeah. that's it guys. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. running the washing machine doing laundry so um, I guess a little bit about our YouTube journey how's it been for you uh, <laughs> it, it's been a lot of work here and there but you know we only push out a video every week so in the end since we're having fun it's not a big deal
and John's editing skills have been getting better, is what I've been told. So I wish I could see his work, but uh, I like to listen to it. The dialogue's funny and the music's good. So that's been a pretty cool experience. Um, what else? Uh, some of our most popular videos, obviously the how the blind do their own makeup has been really popular. That's been picked up by outlets in Europe and stuff. Um, that was a question I get often. So, a uh, YouTube channel hitting 25,000 subscribers Q&A. Take one. Everyone, thanks so much for subscribing to my YouTube channel, Christine Hot Tube. Uh, we just hit 25,000 subscribers. I think it's above 26,000 now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty exciting. John and I have been doing the channel for a couple of years, but only in the past year or so we've been really uh, vamping it up and uh, putting out more content. Um, so I just want to do a thank you video and do a short Q&A. Uh, this is really casual. If you guys hear strange noises around the house, it's because my dogs are running back and forth in the house for whatever reason. And I'm also, you can view that video uh, on my channel. Another question is, uh, people always wonder if it's really me commenting on Facebook or if it's John typing the comments for me. But no, it's really me. I have another mm -hmm. video on my YouTube channel about how the blind email and use Facebook and social media and use the internet. So that's another video that answers that question on my channel. A uh, question I get often